the moon. I want to spend a couple of minutes and talk about the moon. A huge argument against the flat or against the globe is that the, the moon cycle doesn't match up to what we see. This isn't true. Okay, first of all, on the moon, on the flat earth, let's just say the sun's here, the moon goes around like this. Okay, well, this is the flat earth model. What's the globe model? It goes around like this. It's the same motion. It's the sun is just closer and farther away. It's the same motion. So they're, they're identical. You should see them the same way, except for the 24 hour moon cycle. The 24 hour moon cycle is actually what you should observe because as the crescent is on the moon and it's pointed up at the sun because it's in the day and it's up in the middle of the sky and as it sets, that crescent still points at the sun. And as the sun goes behind the earth, the crescent follows it all the way up until the sunrise the next morning when the crescent's facing the opposite direction. This can't be explained on a flat earth. As a matter of fact, on a flat earth, the moon light would go across the front of it, not across the bottom of it. The only way this can be explained is by fabricating some elaborate curvature, which can't be explained or demonstrated, or, the sun's going behind the earth. Um, I'm going to believe what I can see, test, and demonstrate. But they say that you shouldn't see a full moon in the day. That's a bunch of hogwash. If the sun is up and just about ready to go down in the horizon on this side, and the moon is up and has just come up, you could clearly see a full moon. There's full moon more than just one day. It's three or four days. It's a whole area of full mooning that's going on here, okay? So you could clearly see that. And what about the shadow coming from the top to the bottom in a lunar eclipse? Well, if you've got the sun splaying up through the earth and the shadow's pointing up and the moon's going around the earth, the top of the moon is actually going to reach the shadow and this completely explains it and that's exactly what we would see. Well, some people in the flat earth community, now when I say flat earth society, I actually don't mean a group of people that call themselves the flat earth society, a smaller group. I'm referring to the society of people that believe that we're on a flat earth. So I'm not necessarily calling a specific group. I'm calling uh, using society in the terms of a, a larger, the larger group of people. So the flat earth community says that one of the reasons why we, the flat earth has to be is because you can see a lunar eclipse during the daytime. They are rare, but you can see them occasionally. Now, for this, I would like to uh, take a moment and refer back to the looming and the mirages that I talked about in the first section, because it's exactly what's happening. When the, when the sunlight comes up and over the curvature of the earth as it goes down below the horizon, sometimes it can appear that the sun or the sunset um, is actually there, but it's not. The sun is behind the horizon. It is a loom, a mirage. And the same thing would completely be feasible with the moon as it's on the edge in the shadow. Uh, the light would go up around the earth and you would get a loom. I was actually curious about this photo when I took it because it took the moon an extraordinarily long time to go down the last, oh, six inches or so of the horizon. Um, I had been uh, doing moon studies that night, and every five minutes I was taking pictures of the moon. Um, and, you know, you get pretty used to how quick things move across the sky. Um, and those last few inches seem to move a lot slower. Um, and also I got this uh, moon loom, which explains it perfectly. Another group of people actually believe that um, if we were revolving around the sun, um, 180 degrees on the other side, everything would be absolutely the opposite. Well, that is theoretically correct, but as you can see, as we go around the curvature of the sun, or the orbit of the sun, the, uh, the perspective would change. The perspective would change 0.5625% every day until 180 degrees on the other side, you would see identical, the same thing that you saw 180 degrees on the other side. No difference at all. This actually explains why we can see different stars in the winter than in the summer. We have a completely different sky whatsoever. I've actually heard the flat earth, the people who believe in a flat earth say that a red shadow doesn't exist. Anybody believe, that believes that the moon would be shadowed by the earth and be a blood moon is an idiot. Well, I've done some experiments and actually demonstrate that you can get a red shadow. And not only can you get a red shadow, but I put a hard, sphere in the middle of sand where light can't penetrate around it and the light refracted around it and splayed the le the red shadow on the wall through a solid object so it's absolutely plausible not only is it plausible it's demonstrationable it's reasonable 
the flat earth model is unreasonable. Is it possible? Yes, it is, but it's not reasonable. Planes fly flat. Planes don't fly flat. Planes fly curved with the curvature of the earth. They say because the plane doesn't dive that this proves we're on a flat earth. No, that's not exactly true. How do we get how do we get a plane to, gra to, to fly straight? Well, I'm, I don't, I'm not a pilot, but I do fly and I have pilot friends. Flying is, is interesting. You use, the, you use the altitude, which is determined by the air pressure, which would change with the curvature of the earth. And you also use a level, which would change with the curvature of the earth. And you also use a compass, which would change with the curvature of the earth. This is completely a ridiculous uh, a reason to believe in the flat earth. Um, now, they actually say that the pilots are in on a big conspiracy and they all use the flat earth map and, and that's why you know the, all the pilots are in on this conspiracy. They miss the um, Antarctic continent. They don't go under the South Pole and this demonstrates that it's not something that they can fly over. Well, first of all, this isn't true and I'll post some stuff down there to show you. Go down and check it out. Secondly, there was a pilot that came that that has come to the conclusion that the earth is flat now he had an entire career flying a plane and he's now coming to the conclusion based off the evidence that the earth was flat but according to the flat earth model this is not what we should see we should see him coming out of the closet and saying oh i was involved on a conspiracy all the earth maps are flat but it's not the case the maps are globes the people are using globe Earth's maps, which would be impossible with the flat Earth. North of the equator, it's smaller. South of the equator, it's smaller. And they're trying to splay this out to be bigger than the equator. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of miles on top of an already expanding seas and oceans that go thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of miles. I mean, you're not going to find the Hawaii or the Philippine Islands by chance. You're going to have to know exactly where they are not thousands of miles off. So there's no map switching that goes around, on around here, which actually brings me to the next topic, geodesy. Geodesy is actually the science of mathematically measuring the curvature and the size of the Earth. This brings us to Columbus and the discussion of, of whether the Earth was big or small. Way back then we were discovering this mathematically with surveys. All you have to do is, is know some triangles to determine how high an object is. Maybe in high school you remember trigonometry. It's simple stuff. They use this stuff to demonstrate the distances and the heights of objects. Remember, the corners of a triangle always add up to 180 degrees, unless it's on the curve, and then it adds up to greater than 180 degrees, demonstrating the curvature of the Earth. And they map a city, and then they map the next city, and they map the state, and they map the country, and pretty soon they've mapped the whole world. And you know what? The world is a globe. I mean, where's the flat earth math? It's not there. Now, a great, a great guy to go and check out, this man uh, is a professional surveyor and he, and he actually demonstrates the curvature of the earth. It's brilliant. Um, I, I recommend that you check it out. Surveying the flat earth, it's, it's, down, it's down underneath also. The Flat Earth Society says that the North Star being above the North Pole is more evidence that the Earth is flat. They say everything revolves around it and the reason why, the reason why the, they know the world's flat is because it never moves. Well, this isn't true. Actually, the North Star used to be Thuban in Draco constellation. So yes, the North Star is not always, Polaris, Polaris has not always been the North Star and it's moving. The sky, the north part of the sky is actually moving. And as far as parallaxing, there's no parallaxing in the sky. Um, yes, there is. There's parallaxing in the North Hemisphere. There's parallaxing in the Southern Hemisphere. All you got to do is go on and go on and look at some of the math and the observations that other people have made. Of course, everybody's not in a conspiracy, right? I mean, everybody on the planet can't be in a conspiracy that goes against your your theory so come on look at the math look at their work it's real if you want to disprove it buy thousands of dollars in equipment and telescopes and take the measurements and do it yourself and then you can actually have something to demonstrate you need science is not just a theory just because you can't see it with your eyes doesn't mean that it's not there Astronomy 2,000 years ago when it was first thought of the Sun was actually in Aries on March 22 and now it's in Pisces. So we see parallaxing taking place all around us. Just one more flat lie. Perspective. Remember we went over perspective and we demonstrated that the perspective model of the flat earth is just another flat lie. <clears throat> how, how do they get this degree in the front of 
of w the way that you're facing and why is the is the front of how you're facing different than the back I mean if I turn around it should be the same as the front right and why is the left side different than the north or the south they're all different where are they coming up with these degrees of perspective it's all phony and the reason why is because they have to form their model to what we see the fact is we see the stars spinning in uh, counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and we see them uh, flying clockwise in the southern hemisphere which is exactly what we would expect on a globe earth by the way they have to explain this and they say that the, it act, the stars go straight but it looks like they bend it goes straight but it looks like it bends well that's funny because in the southern hemisphere it actually spins completely around so now they're saying well it looks like it spins really it's going flat but then it looks like it spins it's it's perspective and an optical illusion all the stars in the southern hemisphere have their own name their own constellation nothing is a mirror image everything is i is completely different you have a completely different sky in the southern hemisphere than you do in the northern hemisphere this is not reasonable your story and this, the the plot probability of the flat earth is is mounting against you it's becoming less possible and less possible every evidence that we go through there's 24 hours light in the South Pole and Antarctica. And before you say conspiracy, conspiracy, everybody on the planet can't be involved in this conspiracy. Every time somebody brings forth evidence that disproves your theory, you say they're in on a conspiracy. Maybe I'm in on the conspiracy too. Uh, the only way that they can actually overcome the, the uh, 24 hours light in the South Pole is by refracting the light around the entire flat Earth, glow, the flat Earth map model, which is ludicrous and they have no science to back it up. I'm not going to spend very much time, I'm not going to spend any time explaining gravity and why it's not a valid argument that we would just fly off the Earth. Um, if you want to look below, I have a, a title named Gravity and there's some stuff in there that you can study about. But I am going to talk about the magnetic field. Now the magnetic field north is not the exact place of the continental north and the, the difference between those is actually called declination. Now the declination is changing. First of all, the magnetic field does not work on a flat earth. You need a north and south pole, you need an up and down, a central up and down. You can't have a flat disk that the outside part is south and the inside part is north. That's not how magnetism works. Magnetism works like this. This is exactly what we can see, test, and demonstrate. So, the north pole, or the magnetic north, is actually moving, and the reason why it's moving is because we're getting ready for another magnetic reversal. Well, magnetic reversals really do exist. They really do happen. We can see them in the past, and we need to get ready because they're happening in the front. And this is just another evidence that the heliocentric model is the real model. The Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect is actually a very interesting and fascinating thing because the flat earth, again, says that it's false. The flat earth says that the Coriolis effect is false, but it can be tested. Now is what you can do is you can actually take a bowl of water, poke a hole in the bottom of it if you're in the northern hemisphere, and drop some water in there. Make sure the water's not going in any direction before and let it come to a still. Unplug the bottom and it'll actually rotate clockwise in the northern hemisphere. The water will rotate clockwise just like the flower, but in the southern hemisphere it rotates the opposite direction just like the flower. And you know what's even more amazing than that? Is right here on the equator, the flower goes straight down and doesn't even spin at all. Coriolis effect demonstrates a globe. Not to mention the fact that you can have an earthquake here and you can feel it here because the sound waves travel through our globe on the other side and we get a projection of what's taking place on the other side of the earth. Hmm, that's interesting. Right in here, there's some anomalies because it's solid and we know this based off of the sound waves traveling or the waves the impact waves traveling through the earth and coming out in here and us reading all over the planet we know that this is a globe in order for you to not think it was a globe you would have to believe that the entire world is in on a conspiracy so first you have the entire space station around the entire planet millions of people not to mention the military because anybody that uses maps are going to be using a globe map and not a flat earth map they don't interchange like we've talked about before so the military's in on it 
the transportation, anybody that does any transportation, airplane, ships, they're all in on it. Contractors and surveyors, they're in on it. Teachers and everybody that's ever been to the South Pole, they're all in on this giant worldwide conspiracy that the world is flat. I really feel like that at this point we're boarding on either a cult or the Dunning-Kruger effect and I don't mean any insult by it. Jesus says don't call your brother a fool or you're in the dangers of the fires of hell. And believe me, I don't want to call anybody, anybody foolish because they have their own beliefs. I have a right to believe what I believe and you have a right to believe what you believe and we can love each other in that. We can agree to disagree. This is why I believe the globe. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end leads in destruction. And the wisdom of man is foolishness to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 actually says that God is more concerned, he's more concerned with our relationship with each other than you being or me being right. Say it again. 1 Corinthians, the whole chapter says that God is more interested in our relationship being good and a relationship with God being good than even wounding our brother's conscience than he is about being right. You can be wrong by being right. That's what 1 Corinthians chapter 8 is saying. I would actually like to end by a quote from my favorite author. I think she says it best. In uh, Gospel Workers 314.1 she says, When at one time a brother came to me with the message that the world is flat, I was instructed to present the commission that Christ gave his disciples. Therefore, you go and make disciples of all the nations. And lo, I am with you always. In regard to such subjects as the flat world theory, God says to every soul, what is it to you? You follow me. Dwell upon the great testing truths for this time, not upon matters that have no bearing upon our work. That being said, now, I would rather go off of the evidences that I can see, test, and demonstrate rather than the handful of questions that I don't understand. Please don't make your conclusions on what you don't know. Make them on what you do know. I wish you all a great time. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe to see all the fantastic videos that are going to be coming up. God bless you. May He shine His face upon you and be gracious to you. Peace out. <laughs> Funny to me.